Greetings, and thanks for listening. My name is Michael Kelly. I am the brainwave entrainment engineer and consultant for Elite Inner Circle and the Brain Evolution System. I've been working with Lee Benson and his audio engineer Ashley for over the better part of 2005, putting together this amazing system. Now Lee has asked that I share a little bit about the science and history of what makes brain evolution so special. There is an incredible amount of technical work that goes into creating a quality product such as this. For this reason, I'll need to give you a background on the history of brainwave technology so that you can really appreciate the value of this groundbreaking program. Before we can understand the technology, let's talk about what brain waves are. Your brain is composed of billions of brain cells called neurons, and these neurons communicate using electricity. Now the combination of all these neurons sending electrical signals at once produces a detectable amount of electricity in the brain. This activity can be recognized using sensitive medical equipment, such as an EEG, to measure the electrical levels over the scalp. Now when one reviews the brain's electrical signals, they move up and down in waves, hence the term brain wave. Now these waves are categorized by how many times their frequency moves up and down per second, and this is also known as Hertz frequency. Typically our brain wave frequencies are grouped into four categories from 0 to 40 Hertz. Each of these brain wave categories demonstrates differing states of consciousness or brain wave activity, depending on how fast or slow one's brain wave frequencies are moving. The first and fastest of these frequencies, beta, operates the zone between 13 Hz and 40 Hz. Beta activity is quick connect, fast neural activity that is seen when the brain is highly alert and well focused. Beta activity may be absent or reduced in areas of brain damage. It is generally regarded as a normal rhythm and tends to be the dominant mode for those of us who are alert, anxious, or have their eyes open. High beta levels can also accompany emotional stress. Moving on down the line, we have alpha, which dominates the zone between 8 Hz and 13 Hz. The alpha zone can indicate a relaxed alertness. Alpha is usually best detected in the frontal regions of the head and on each side of the brain. Now, alpha's presence is increased by closing the eyes and relaxation, yet is offset by opening one's eyes or any concentrated effort. It is also worthy to note that alpha is the major rhythm seen in normal relaxed adults. Next we have theta moving from 4 Hz to 8 Hz. This group involves drowsiness and daydreaming. It's also the first stage of sleep or an example of indirect non-concentration imagination or thinking. Theta activity is not often seen in awake adults but is perfectly normal in alert children up to 13 years of age and in most of our adult sleeping. Next and last we have Delta. This operates the zone between 0 and 4 Hz. Delta is seen in deep dreamless sleep and is an example of slow wave background thinking. Much like bass sound, Delta tends to be the highest in amplitude and the slowest of waveforms. It is quite normal and it is the dominant rhythm seen in infants up to one year of age and also in our adult stages of 3 and 4 which are deep and dreamless sleep. Since the discovery of our brain waves now almost a century ago, more specialized and sensitive equipment has been developed to bring us closer to understanding exactly what brain waves represent about our brain's functioning, and more fantastically, what they mean about our health and state of mind. You see, you can understand a great deal about an individual by simply observing their brain wave patterns. By reviewing this brain wave data, we can pinpoint moments of concentration, sleep patterning, memory retention, stress, motor function, and much more. In the realm of brain ailments, brain waves reveal the secrets of attention deficit disorder, schizophrenia, insomnia, and physical brain damage, just to name a few. With these discoveries, it is no surprise that researchers have found ways to stimulate or entrain brain waves to change a person's mental state in order to treat a variety of mental disorders. Now, throughout this series, and while we mention the program, we're going to use the word entrainment a great deal. In the next talk, I'll go a little bit more over what brainwave entrainment means and what it can do for you. Stay tuned.